Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have a hand from a World Series of Poker main event that I played at some point in the past. I don't even know what year it's from. Let's see if I played it great or if I screwed it up. Here we are early in day one. We are very deep stacked. We have 50,000 chips playing 75, 150. The player under the gun plus one limps and I'm in the small blind with ace five of spades. Take a second, think about what you do here. Once you figure it out, click the like, click the subscribe button, please. That helps YouTube know that you like my work. If you don't tell it you like my work, well, that wouldn't be good for me. Anyway, here we have ace five of spades. I think you can go either way between limping or raising. We're definitely not folding. If we do raise, we want to make it something like 700. That's going to result in our opponent folding some portion of the time, which is fine. And also, if we do make it 700 and the opponent calls, well, that's just more for us to win after the flop. I think I would prefer raising much, much more from the button or the cutoff or any of the other in-position spots. From the small blind, you have to be a little bit cautious raising too aggressively because under the gun plus one probably did not limp with total garbage looking to limp fold. That said, it's fine if we go ahead and start building the pot because if I do make an effective nut hand, we want to be able to win a huge amount of chips. And also if our opponent calls pre-flop and then folds on the flop, that's fine too. So I do make it 700. Big blind and under the gun plus one call. That's not really what I wanted. Flop comes king to two. Yuck. So we have literally nothing. That said, the board also contains almost nothing. It's pretty hard for any player to have a two. So you really want to ask in this scenario, who has more ace kings in the range and pocket aces and pocket kings? Well, that's definitely me, right? You have to think either of our opponents would have raised and or re-raised with those hands before the flop. So when they just call, you can start to discount those hands from their range. So given we are very deep stacked, this is a spot where I really like applying immense aggression, assuming I don't face any resistance. If I bet and get raised at any point, I'm folding. And that's okay. We move on with our lives. Sometimes we're going to lose the pot. So we want to ask ourselves in this scenario, how do I get fold equity across multiple betting rounds? And what you want to do is you want to start by betting small so that your opponents will call you with everything that is not just total trash. And then ramp it up a little bit on the turn, bet a little bit bigger in proportion to the pot. And then on the river, go for a big bet essentially trying to make your opponent think that you have aces and are trying to get called by their obvious king. Because to be fair, by the river, they probably are going to have a king and that's what we're trying to get them to fold. Now, you have to be careful trying to get people to fold top pair, but if you use big bet sizes and your betting line tells a very reasonable story, like you have aces, for example, I would raise pre-flop with aces, I would bet the flop small, I would bet the pop bet the turn medium, and I would bet the river. Maybe not huge with aces, because I think they're going to fold a king, but a lot of people will not know your river strategy. So in this scenario, I like a small flop bet. If we bet in both players' call, we probably will just give up, but if we get one caller, we'll most likely continue bluffing. So we do go very small on the flop. I go 600 into the 2200 pot. I think we may go even a little bit bigger, maybe like 700 or 800. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But you don't want to bet so small to where literally any two cards calls you because then you're going to get called by both opponents and you don't know how much fold equity you have on the later betting rounds. So we do go 600 and under the gun plus one calls. As expected, like I said, this flop bet's going to get called a lot, almost always. So you need to make sure you are planning to continue betting the turn plus the river. So in this situation, we pause 3,400. Now I want to make a bet that will start to make every hand worse than a king very uneasy. So pocket sevens, pocket nines, right? Those types of hands, ace high. So now I think we want to bet something like 2,000. If I bet 2,000 and the opponent calls, then I'm going to bet something like 7,500, roughly the pot, on the river. And I think, I think that's going to get our opponent to fold out Every hand worse than perhaps King Jack or King 10. And if you think about our opponent's initial limping range, remember, they limped. They probably would have raised Ace, King, King, Queen, King Jack, right? So if I can get them to fold out King 10 and worse by the river, I'm really only getting called by the Spratic 2, which would be mostly Ace 2 suited, which I block, so there's only one of those available. Pocket 2s, there's only one of those available. Um, pocket 8s that got there on the turn, so there's three of those. And then King 8 suited if our opponent even has it. So... 
if you think that's the only range that will call the turn bet plus the river bet, you're gonna end up making your opponent fold out the vast majority of their range by the river, and that's gonna allow you to print tons of equity, whereas more passive players would just not even take the spot. For example, what they do is they just call limp preflop, then they just check fold the flop. They're like, oh, didn't lose any money, that's good. But in reality, we could very likely manufacture this medium-sized pot with just a little bit more risk. So anyway, on the turn, like I said, I'm gonna bet something like 1,800 or 2,000. That is what I did. The opponent just makes their life easy, they fold. Like I said though, if our opponent did call, I would definitely continue betting the turn. When our opponent folds the turn, they probably had ace high, with most of which I lose to or chop with, or a medium pair like pocket fours. And I think this is just a standard spot that comes up all the time that a lot of people do not take. They take the very passive route, just trying to flop the nuts, hoping their opponents make some sort of egregious error post-flop and pay them off for 300 big blinds whenever I make a flush over here. But that's just not going to happen all that often. The way you consistently chip up early in tournaments is by applying small amounts of aggression in spots like this where you can make your opponent fold out the vast majority of their range. So consistently pay attention and look for spots like this because this is how the best players in the world are always chipping up while everybody else is sitting there trying to make the nuts or dwindling down the best players are reaching out a little bit here and there and picking up a lot of these small and medium pots that their more passive opponents just simply do not take they're there for the taking all you have to do is take them so that's gonna be it for today hope you enjoyed this video click like click subscribe have a great week and i'll talk to you next time